and turn to song number 94. Christian hymnal song number 94. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Omit verse 3. Oh, oh come all ye faithful, joyful. page to number 92. The very familiar carol, carol of joy to the world, number 92.
number 95. O beautiful star of Bethlehem. And we'll sing the first and the last verse. Number 95, O beautiful star of Bethlehem. First and last verse. O beautiful star of Bethlehem. On behalf of Gaiman's Mennonite School, I want to welcome you all here this evening. It's good to see everyone here and just the support that we feel at Gaiman's. Thank you for your presence here this evening. Ms. Nolt and the students have been working very hard at, for, for this day, for this program. And I believe that their desire is that when we, after the program, that you're going to feel maybe the, the true meaning of Christmas. And I think that's, their, that's our desire this evening, that is going to bring us closer to Christ. And so before we get into the program, let's just close our eyes and ask God, invite him into our presence here this evening. Let's pray. Dear God, as we come before you this evening, we just invite you into our presence here. I pray that as we think about this Christmas season, I pray that we would just be a thankful people just for the many blessings that we have. And as we think about what you did for us, and you died on the cross for our sins, and we know that you had to come here, and you knew the pain that you were going to have to go through, and we just thank you so much for doing that. I pray now for this evening. I pray for the students. I pray that as they uh, sing, I just pray that they would remember what they have practiced, and I just pray that it would be a good evening. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The only thing left for Renee to do before Christmas break is to prepare and give a devotional to her youth group. Her youth sponsor wants her to share from 2 Corinthians 8-9, a scripture that isn't typically used for Christmas Bible lessons. The outline given her consists of four questions. It's Saturday afternoon and the meeting is in the evening, crunch time. 
Renee isn't ready. Even worse, she can't find her Bible. Mom! Have you seen my Bible? When is the last time you used it? I don't know. I, I think I left it at church. Or maybe school. I don't know. And I have to prepare the devotional for tonight. At least I didn't lose the outline Mr. Sanders gave me. But I need my Bible. Look, look, you can use the new study Bible Dad got me last Christmas. Ah, thanks, Mom. You rescued me again. Yes, yes. But please, do not take it out of this house. It's very special to me. Ah, don't worry, Mom. I'll, re- I'll take really good care of it. I'll care for it as if it were mine. Oops, I'm sure Mom felt that deeply reassuring. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, here it is. Second Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. First question. So how was Jesus rich? Uh, mom's, bo- mom's study Bible has a note on verse 9. Okay says, rich is not a reference to Jesus' material wealth on earth, but a recognition of his eternal status as Lord of heaven and earth. Material wealth? Eternal status? Oh, how can I translate this Christianese into plain English? Before becoming a baby in Bethlehem, Jesus was rich because he was the owner of the universe, the ruler of the universe, Okay, next question. So, what does the poverty of Jesus refer to?
2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Before becoming a baby in Bethlehem, Jesus was rich as the Lord of heaven and earth. But for our sakes, he became poor. Hey, Mom! 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 Sorry for yelling, but I need an answer, like ASAP. What does it mean that Jesus became poor? Did he get a huge bill shopping for Christmas gifts? Renee, seriously, Jesus didn't shop for Christmas gifts. The celebration of Christmas started in Rome about 336 years after Christ, and it did not become a major Christian festival until the 9th century. Besides, Jesus himself is the greatest gift of to mankind. Oh, uh, yeah. Duh. Uh, he didn't become poor shopping for Christmas gifts. Well, did he become poor by giving away all his money to the poor people? It appears from Luke 4 that a group of women followers supported the public ministry of Jesus and his disciple. Disciples. Evidently, Jesus did not have a great deal of material wealth to give away. You mean that a group of women actually gave Jesus and his disciples money? That's a new one for me. Thanks, Mom. Okay, let's see. Her study Bible has another note. I hope I won't need a dictionary to understand it. Okay. It says, he became poor through the total giving of himself in the incarnation and the crucifixion. The incarnation. Aren't carnation flowers guys give to girls? Man, why can't these guys who make study Bibles use simple, plain English? Okay. Oh, here's what it means. Okay. Incarnation. A central Christian teaching that Jesus, God's son, became truly man while remaining truly God. See Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Okay. Philippians 2... Five through eight. Okay, here it is. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had, that though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Jesus became poor, by becoming human so he could die on the cross for our sins. Okay, I, I think I get that. But 2 Corinthians says that Jesus did all this to make people rich. If Jesus was poor, how could he make other people rich?
Isn't it just awesome hearing young people raise their voices to God in wonderful unison? Let's have another round of applause for the children. It really, really sounded good. A lot of hard work went into this, and I really appreciate all of that. And uh, you parents, too, all the support of your children were learning the songs. It's not easy. Well, here comes the part of the time we all came out for, the board report. <laughs> um, my name's Sean Brubacher. I serve as secretary on the Gaiman's board. Um, we, had a, we had a good year, real good year. So I appreciate all your support, all your prayers for the teachers, for the students, for the faculty. It doesn't go unnoticed. Appreciate that. The Servathon, that was a resounding success. $57,000 were raised in the Servathon. That was awesome. So I want to appreciate all you students and grandparents and parents that all donated toward that. So I want to thank you for all that hard work. That goes a long way. There's a talent program at the school uh, this coming February 1st on a Wednesday in the gym. Uh, you can put that on your calendars. There's an open house on February 7th, 6.30 to 8 in the evening, and Thursday, February 8th, 9 to 12. Um, so put that on the calendars. Invite everyone you know that's looking for a school. Uh, attendance, that really helps the uh, balancing the budget when we have a full school. So um, anyone you know that's looking for a school, just put the word out there. Let them know that there's going to be an open house. And uh, so February, February 7th and 8th. Now comes to the gym project. Well, this is the long road as uh, it was started back a couple years ago. And then thanks to an ec economic downturn, it got shelved and we just, you know, the funds weren't there. We couldn't, we couldn't make it go. But now it's back up and we are plowing forward. It's gonna happen. We're gonna build a gym this time. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Amen. Currently, we're in land development with a township, and they're reviewing the drawings. So it's in the permitting phase. We don't foresee a lot of problems with that, but you know, it's, it's with the, uh, the red tape, so you never know. As you can see up there on the, uh, on the wall there, that's a gorgeous building. That's going to come in really handy. And I want to thank everyone that was involved in the planning stages of that. <clears throat> the first time around and this time, I want to thank the building committee for coming up with that design. I think it's going to be functional and pretty, too. So it's, it's really come a long way. We're hoping to break ground this spring. There's not a firm date yet because we're still, we still don't have the permits in hand. But we're looking at starting in the spring. And if that happens, hopefully completing in late fall. That's the hope of next year, 2023. We currently... And Barry sent me an update this morning because it raised significantly. $996,000 were raised so far for the gym. And that is thanks to all your hard work, all the businesses that donated, all the matching funds. It really, really helped. We had a, a goal of $1 million before the end of the year. And... We're hoping to hit that. We were really hoping to hit that. Tonight's offering will go to that, to that fund, so uh, the ushers can come forward at this time to uh, lift the offering. And it's looking like it's going to happen. And we'll, I, again, want to thank all of you that donated toward that, to put time into that, and really push this. That way it happens this time. And I, I, I again, want to thank those that worked hard last time, and it unfortunately fell through, but this time... We're going to do it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing us all together here tonight to worship your name and to raise our voices for you, Lord, and help us just be a, a sanctuary of you. And we'll thank you for all the blessings you have given us and thank you for all the hard work of everyone involved, children, uh, students, the faculty, teachers. I want to thank you, Lord, and I want to bless this offering, Lord, as it goes toward a building fund that you have, saw, you have showed to be uh, useful to work out, Lord. And I want to thank you and bless the money 
that we gather tonight and help the, the future gym to be good, put to good use, Lord, for your honor and glory. In your name, amen. We're going to sing Angels We Have Heard on High. It is song number 119 in the songbook, if you need a songbook, or you're welcome to sing it by memory. If you're able, I invite you to stand as we sing this Angels We Have Heard on High. We will sing the first and the last verse. Angels We Have Heard on High, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echo back their joyous strains. And then verse 4 is, See him in a manger laid, whom the choirs of angels praise. Mary, Joseph, lend your aid, while our hearts in love we raise. Mm-hmm. Angels, we have heard. Corinthians 8 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. So, how did Jesus becoming poor make other people rich? Uh, here is another note. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. In the context, the stress is on Christ's voluntary surrender of glory contrasted with the spiritual wealth derived by others through his gracious act of giving. Hmm. Wouldn't it be just as helpful to say Jesus was born to die so that those who trust in him can get salvation? Oh, the note says Ephesians 1.3. Okay. Ephesians 1.1. 3. Here, okay. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So Jesus does not make all believers billionaires. He pours on us spiritual riches to be enjoyed now and forever in heaven. Okay, now for my last point. 
So what? What does all this mean to me and my youth group?
2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus, as ruler of the universe, was infinitely rich. Jesus, God's son, became a man to die for mankind. That is poverty. Out of his poverty, those who put their trust in him receive spiritual riches of salvation. Riches better than anything here on earth. Okay, one final question. What does all this mean to me and my youth group? Hmm. One final note from Mom's Study Bible. Okay, it says, By the grace of Jesus, believers in Jesus can be generous like Jesus. By the grace of Jesus, believers in Jesus can be generous like Jesus. What would that look like? Maybe some rich American teenager would organize a gift drive for orphans instead of for her family and friends. Yeah, or... Or she could donate time to Water Street Rescue Mission and get, yeah, donate time to help serve a meal. The grace of Jesus can make us generous like Jesus. Mom! Mom! Mother! I am on the phone with Dad. What is it? Sorry, I didn't know you were on the phone. <laughs> hey, since you're talking to Dad, can you ask him to look for my Bible? Your father is at the hardware store looking for some parts for our toilet. I don't think you left your Bible there. He's at the hardware store? Did I leave my Bible at the hardware store? Oh, I thought he was at church. Um, <clears throat> Are you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay, Ah. Uh, so, you know, how to do that devotional for a youth group? Well, I kind of, I think I summed it up in one sentence. I'm very proud of myself. So, how does this sound? The grace of Jesus can make us generous like Jesus. Sounds good.
we conclude our program tonight with Christ is Born in Bethlehem. If you have attended Gaiman's Mennonite School, you're invited to come on up and help us. We have copies of the song uh, at the end of this bench and at the end of that bench. I see you all back there. Come on up. Sopranos, altos over here, tenor bass over here.
Well done, well done, students. As I uh, was sitting there listening tonight, our program says the child of the poor. And I thought about the child of the poor. He came as a little baby, gave everything he had for us. So why? So we can spend eternity with him. And again, as the children were singing, the students were singing, that's what heaven's going to be like. So as this Christmas season, we enter this Christmas season, I ask you to remember the true meaning of Christmas. Why Christmas? Because one gave his life for, because he loved us so much. So someday we can gather together with him and sing together. What a glorious day that would be. But again, thank you again for the students, teachers, for all your hard work at Gaiman's. Uh, again, it takes a lot of practice. We thank you for that. A few things before we dismiss. First of all, I want to thank you for your generous gift tonight and the offering from the board and the building committee. We were able to raise $20,743 tonight. So thank you so much. So that puts us over the 1 million mark. So thank you again, and we'll keep moving forward together. Again, another reminder, as we leave here tonight, we ask the children, do not go downstairs. And again, there's a lot of children here tonight. As we leave, the children will be running in the parking lot, so please be careful that these dear ones don't, uh, nothing happens. We have no accidents tonight. So again, eyes on the parking lot tonight as you leave. So thank you again, students, teachers, administrators, for all your hard work here at Gaiman's um, in the last couple of weeks for this Christmas program. Let's stand for the benediction. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for your love that you poured out as you sent your little baby into this world to die for us. He was poor but yet rich, and he gave that richness to us so someday we can spend eternity with you and we can sing them praises as we, we, we read in Scripture, there's hymns that will be sung at your side. Lord, again, we just ask a special blessing upon these students, all the teachers, administrators, all the hard work, the volunteers that are, is poured into Gaiman's Monday Night School. We just want to thank you for all their hard work, Lord. And again, we want to ask that you bless them. Bless one, each one individually, Lord. You know their hearts and you know their, what their actions and you know what they do. We just ask again that you bless these people. Again, we ask for safety as we leave this place tonight. We ask safety upon the, the young children. As we travel home, we ask for safety on the roads too, Lord. Lord, again, as we part from here, just again, just help us that we remember the reason for this season, this coming Christmas uh, day, on, here, here in a week and a half, Lord. Again, that we praise you and thank you for that dear little one you blessed us so dearly with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pardon peace.